This video falls under fair use as it's a parody. If you don't have a sense of humor, go fuck yourself. Welcome. Is this my reality? Is this your reality? In the reality I come from, things like this wouldn't happen. But in this new reality, there seems to be a sinister motive behind a seemingly good thing. What am I talking about? Racist adoptions. Yes, racist friggin' adoptions. Disgusting, I know. But they're evil white couples under the charade of wanting to give these unwanted children a loving home all the while secretly planning to be all racist and shit to these same children. Now these are the shocking accusations made recently by former NFL quarterback and full-time crybaby, Colin Kaepernick. Do we have proof? Yes, we do. So let's get this show on the road. high school coming of age story his journey embracing his blackness despite resistance from many including his white adoptive parents Kaepernick was born November 3rd 1987 he is an American civil rights activist football quarterback and all around jerk off Colin who's a free agent wait a minute really seriously how long are you allowed to be a free agent in this reality I guess forever he played six seasons for the San Francisco 49ers in the NFL. In 2016, he knelt during the national anthem at the start of NFL games in protest of police brutality and racial inequality in the United States. Out of courage, was awe-inspiring. So they told us. I never got how a multi-millionaire making a statement on the job, a job that's playing a game, is, is somehow now brave. Try that nonsense at your job, Mr. and Mrs. Normal Person, and see if you get a friggin' shoe deal. Try it. I know my parents loved me, but there were still very problematic things that I went through. I think it was important to show that, no, this can happen in your own home, and how we move forward collectively while addressing the racism that is being perpetuated. Kaepernick was born to 19-year-old Heidi Russo, he was a white American, 19 years old. Birth mom was a bit of a goer back in the day. Just saying. Now his birth father, who well, his identity, of course, is unknown. Really? Separated from Russo before Kaepernick was born. <laughs> You're kidding. Oh, but wait. But no blame. Yep, no blame on him. None. None whatsoever. Anyway, Russo placed Kaepernick up for adoption at five weeks old. He was placed with a white couple. Rick and Teresa Kaepernick. Ugh, such white names, right? And they swooped in at five weeks old. Five weeks. They needed to start their reign of racist terror on his helpers, baby, as soon as possible. They used privilege and stole him from his mother and father, who loved and wanted him. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Sorry. The couple also had two biological children, who, of course, were the favorites. Son Kyle and daughter Devon. It's kind of like a point guard's name though, Devon. But anyway, I digress. The Kaepernicks decided to adopt the baby after losing their two other sons to heart defects. So after the loss of two children, these so-called parents decided to adopt a black boy just to unleash their racistness. So diabolical. He took cues from his icon, basketball star Allen Iverson, who he said wore his blackness like a suit of armor. And teenage Kaepernick wanted cornrows to match. He's getting what roles, his mom asked? Oh, your hair's not... Sitting here, I'm supposed to be the franchise player, and we're in here talking about practice. I mean, listen, we're talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We're talking about practice. Yeah, seems like a good role model to me, right? In the third preseason game of the 2016 season, Kaepernick sat during the playing of the national anthem. 
rather than standing, which is customary. Now, this was done as a protest against racial injustice, police brutality, and oppression in the country. The following week, and throughout the regular season, Kaepernick kneeled during the anthem. And the fans, the fans really seemed to get behind this. Oh, wait. They didn't. Here's one example of the blatant racism coming from the Kaepernicks. After an article fixated on Collins' tattoos around the time of his first NFL start, his mom, Teresa, told the USA Today it annoyed her. Quote, you're categorizing this kid on something like tattoos? Really? That's how you're going to define this kid? It's pretty irritating. But it is what it is. Unquote. Yes, on the surface, that might seem supportive to the untrained eye. But what Teresa was probably thinking is how can you worry about his tattoos when he's black? Oh, the racism oozing off of this woman? It's obvious. Professional. Oh, you look like a little thug. Your mom become. said that too. Yeah. And those become spaces where it's like, okay, how do I navigate this situation now? But it also is informed why I have my hair long today. How can the NFL be blackballing the quarterback of his talent? I mean, oh, wait a minute. You're really not supposed to give the ball to the other team? No? Oh. Kaepernick reportedly started dating radio personality and television host Nessa Diop in July 2015. Now, I'm just going to let that sit there for now and simmer. The grown-up version of Eve wanted to go back in time and give young Colin a lot of hugs. And I was really moved and saddened by the level of kind of self-awareness that he had to develop at a very young age without a lot of guidance. After he got shit canned from the 49ers in 2016, Kaepernick went unsigned through the offseason in 2017 training camps, leading to allegations that he was being blackballed. See, look, they even call it blackballed. Blackballed people think because of his on field political statements, as opposed to his performance. Yes, the NFL would never hire anybody that was questionable. Look, the NFL would take O.J. Simpson back if he could still run for 2,000 yards, all right? Also in 2016, Kaepernick and his partner, Nessa, do I sense some symptom there? Just saying. They founded the Know Your Rights Camp, an organization which held free seminars to disadvantaged youths, youths to teach them about self-empowerment, American history, like I can just imagine what's being taught there, and, of course, legal rights. The same year, Kaepernick wore a t-shirt featuring a picture of a meeting between Malcolm X and Fidel Castro and went out of his way to praise the Cuban literacy program. Really? Castro? Um, you do know he had over 200 people killed for protesting, Colin. People like you? You can't be fucking serious, right? As further proof of their racism, after he decided to kneel during the national anthem, his parents had the gall to release a statement. Listen to this blatant racism. Colin is carrying a heavy load and following a difficult path, as he truly believes in. He is putting his entire future and possibly his life on the line for those beliefs. As his parents, it pains us to read articles and tweets saying that his family does not support him. This could not be any further from the truth. I mean, wow. How could any man deal with this? These, these people are they're, they're, they're just evil. In November of 2017, he filed a grievance against the NFL and its owners, accusing them of colluding to keep him out of the league. But Colin withdrew his grievance in February 2019 
after reaching, get this, a confidential settlement with the NFL. So if you get paid, it's all good. Problem solved. Fuck what I said. Pay me. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. The report, Colin Kaepernick paid 60 to 80 million by the NFL. Hypocrisy much? It is. In 2019, Nike released a shoe featuring the Betsy Ross flag. It was called the Air Max One Quick Strike 4th of July Trainers. Kind of a long name, but anyway. And trainers were designed to celebrate Independence Day. This model was subsequently withdrawn after Colin Kaepernick told the brand he and others found the flag offensive. But the fuck with all the people offended by your kneeling, right? Do we see a pattern forming? More hypocrisy? So Nike released an ad featuring Kaepernick with the text, believe in something, even it means sacrificing everything. NFL spokesperson Jocelyn Moore responded to the ad by saying Kaepernick's social commentary deserves our attention and action. And then they asked Nike to see if they could get more of those sneakers made by slave labor, quick, fast, and in a hurry. Just like herpes, he's never going to go away. 2020, amid the St. George Floyd protest, the New York Times wrote that the NFL had wrestled with the issue of race, noting that three quarters of NFL players are African American, yet nearly every NFL team owner is white. What the fuck does this mean? How do you how do you wrestle with that? Should the NFL just give black people a team? You know if they do, it's going to be the Raiders. Just saying. As a result of being brought up by these racist white parents, Kaepernick supports the abolition of the police and prisons. Now, this guy's a thinker. Who needs cops? Prisons. It's just a remnant of a long gone time. Now that crime doesn't exist because everyone has a sense of personal responsibility. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, my bad. Now he's not calling for prison reform, nope. No reform here. Prison reform is only reforming, reshaping, and rebranding systematic racism. I wonder if they got a copyright on that word. Sure, why reform it when you just ban it, right? Yeah, that's what I think. How is this possible? How can this man have accomplished so much in so little time when the shadow of the clans stole him at five months from no one? Kaepernick's who took him in, they sent him to good schools, they went to all of his games, they gave him a stable home in nice neighborhoods so he could play ball, just so they could be racist. We need to stop this. We need to stop racist adoptions. Oh, how is Colin Kaepernick like Al Bundy? They both sucked at football, and then they moved on to sell shoes. Thank you. Hit that like, subscribe button. Get the fuck out of here.